Καλημέρα. Good morning from Thessaloniki. Good morning from Validion Conference Center. I would like to welcome you to this uh, online meeting uh, called um, The Europe of Regions, The Road to Economic and Social Recovery, organized by Association of the Greek Regions uh, and uh, Tifhel Expo and the European Committee of the Regions. I'm very happy to be with you, Mr. Apostle. Dizikostas, uh, who is uh, the main host of this event, uh, asked me to be the moderator in this event. I was very happy because uh, from my experience in uh, Brussels for the last six years, um, uh, as part of uh, 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 Sky uh, TV, I have realized uh, that uh, the uh, European Committee of the Regions is the backbone of the European Union. Right now, we are all facing a crisis. This crisis might be a huge opportunity because countries like Greece, uh, where uh, the urban centers uh, have uh, a huge amount of population, then it, probably it's high time for the regions to prove uh, that they can be self-sufficient, that they can have um, uh, uh, their own smart networks uh, that would attract people to live there uh, and prosper there. We're going to have a very interesting discussion today because we're having the leading actors of regions. We, we have the pleasure and honor to have with us Mrs. Elisa Ferreira, who is a European Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms, as well as Mr. Theodoros Kilakakis, who is the Alternate Minister of, Def of Finance in Greece, Mr. Yunus Omarji, who is the President of the Committee on Regional Development, and Mr. Papastergiou, who is the president of the Central Union of Greek Municipalities. I wouldn't like to take too much of your time. I would like to give the floor right away to Mr. Zizi Kostas, uh, who will tell us his views uh, about whether this crisis could be an opportunity for the regions in the region of Central Macedonia. Yes, this crisis is a huge opportunity, not only for the region of Central uh, Macedonia and not only for the regions of Europe, but the, for the whole of the European Union. I would like to welcome you all to our event today. I would like to thank Mrs. Varbiciotti for accepting my uh, invitation to be the moderator of this uh, meeting because she is the right person, the most suitable person uh, to moderate this event. Uh, I would like also to thank uh, the Commissioner, Madam Commissioner, uh, for uh, her reforms. Uh, it's a great honor to have you with us today, Madam Commissioner. Uh, the speaker is speaking in English now. Uh, we really appreciate your work and your collaboration. Και να καλωσορίσω επίσης και τον πρόεδρο της Επιτροπής του Περιφερειακών Υποθέσεων του Ευρωκοινού. And I would like also to uh, welcome Mr. Yunus Omarje. Um, it's a great honor for us to have you uh, with us today. We're going to talk about a lot of issues today and we're going to explore how the regions can play a really important role uh, for the future of Europe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for attending this event online and all of you for being here with us physically speaking. Unfortunately, not more than 50 people due to COVID-19. It's a great pleasure for uh, uh, the region of Central Macedonia uh, and uh, the Association of Greek Regions uh, to organize uh, this event together uh, with uh, TIFHEL Expo under the auspices uh, of uh, the a European um, uh, Committee for the Regions. Uh, our meeting today is held just two days after the first presentation by the President of the Commission, uh, Madame Ursula von der Leyen, uh, who talked about the State of the Union. There we saw the President presenting um, uh, where the European Union is found today, which are our targets and which is the direction we should move to. Uh, 
of course, uh, being the president uh, of uh, the uh, European Committee of the Regions, I would like uh, to point out that uh, for us, a pioneering role and decisive role for the role of, future role of Europe for the economy and for recovery and uh, for getting away from this uh, economic and pandemic uh, hygienic crisis, um, undoubtedly uh, this role can be played by structural funds. Today, the sources of social cohesion, which uh, luckily after the decision made by the European Union will remain at the high level they were in the years in the previous year, we all realize that this is the only way for the economy of the European Union to recover uh, so that the regions and the member states can recover. In this effort, a catalytic and leading role, a key role, is played by our first speaker in our panel today, the competent commissioner, Mrs. Ferreira. Ms. Ferreira. She has proven uh, all this year being in charge of uh, the structural funds uh, um, and of uh, NSRF. Uh, she has proven that she has both the skill and the knowledge uh, in close, co very close cooperation with the European Union and uh, municipalities to readjust these funds uh, uh, according to the needs that have derived due to uh, the pandemic. So she moved on to a rescheduling of the, the European funds uh, immediately after the hygiene crisis and when we realized that, that uh, this um, uh, pandemic will have serious impact on the economies of the European Union. And we have said that we're going to tackle the impact of uh, this pandemic. So what did Europe do? Europe changed the regulations and the rules. The rules today and the regulations today allow the member states and the regions to use more quickly, more easily and more effectively those social cohesion funds in order to be able to direct them where the problem lies, where the local economies face serious problems and issues. And I'd like to give you some examples from our own reality here in order to be better understood. That's the only way that we can better tackle the pandemic. That's the way uh, that we were able here in central Macedonia to direct 80 million euros from these funds to our hospitals in order to upgrade our hospitals, both concerning medical and technical equipment and for hiring auxiliary and additional medical personnel in order to be able to tackle the pandemic uh, in the following months. So thanks to the rescheduling that Mrs. Ferreira uh, did uh, and the European Union did, uh, we managed to present our program called The Exodus or Way Out. That is a program that supports SMEs, small and medium sized uh, enterprises. And I'd like to thank Mrs. Ferreira for her support support. In this way, we can direct 150 million euros uh, uh, to support uh, small and medium-sized enterprises in central uh, Macedonia. We can provide a non-refundable subsidy and grant in order to uh, support and help businesses that suffered a lot due to pandemic. And in this way, we safeguard that uh, uh, all people will keep their jobs. This are just two examples uh, that uh, the social cohesion funds can do because social cohesion funds can be found uh, everywhere around us. Uh, the schools where our children go, transportation works, uh, hospitals, uh, the projects uh, for social support and solidarity, uh, projects in tourism, economy and culture projects everywhere. Therefore, it is proven, ladies and gentlemen, how and why the regions play this nodal role in uh, uh, the European Union of the present and the future, simply because they 
uh, transform the impersonal, faceless uh, uh, funds of the European Union into measurable uh, projects uh, for our societies. Our fellow citizens uh, uh, see these projects and they realize uh, how important the European Union role is for our lives and how these funds are turned into uh, active and tangible examples and projects. Uh, as you know, the European Committee of the Regions represents 90,000 municipalities and 357 regions in Europe. We have signed the Cohesion Alliance, which is very important for the cohesion policy. In this, we invest in green and digital transition, in social inclusion and justice, and the recovery and resilience of our local economies from the pandemic. In conclusion, I would like to refer to something that I believe that it is a national success for our country. What I mean is uh, the recent uh, summit in July. During that uh, summit, um, Greece managed to safeguard 71 billion euros uh, from the uh, cohesion fund, uh, from the recovery fund. Uh, and. Um, these 71 billion euros from the recovery fund will be the tool that will totally change Greece because this amount of money together with the cohesion fund and the national resources, the recovery fund is the fund that will give the opportunity to member states, regions and municipalities to move on with their projects and change the country. So I would like to congratulate the competent minister who is going to have the floor later on, Mr. Skilakakis, and he is the one who will uh, be in charge and to manage the recovery fund. Mr. Skilakakis will support this course and will give uh, to the regions and the municipalities the role they can play in relation to the recovery fund and the role of Europe. Thank you very much, Mr. Digicosta. We will We'll move on to Mrs. Ferreira. Besides all the projects that have occurred in recent uh, uh, months, uh, what are going to be the priorities of the commis Commission? In which sectors would the Commission like to see these uh, funds uh, to be used? Mrs. Ferreira, the floor is yours. Okay, so Kalimera and Efkaristo, uh, President Tsitsi Kostas, for this invitation. I welcome uh, the opportunity to discuss with you this morning, with you alongside the, the Minister of Interior, uh, Mr. Theodorikakos, and all the governors of the 13 regions of Greece, uh, the road to recovery at this crucial junction um, and you just mentioned a couple of examples of what has been done. I would just like to say a good, uh, um, très sincère bonjour à Monsieur Yunus Omarji. And I would like to underline that the European Parliament was another important actor in passing all this legislation. So uh, it's really a joint work. And thank you very much for, for your, uh, your nice words. In fact, throughout the years, and thanks to cohesion policy, Greece has completed many important projects in the field of uh, transport, digital infrastructure, entrepreneurship, energy, environment, social and health care. You mentioned some of them. These projects not only have improved the daily lives of the Greek people, but they have also opened a cycle of job creation, economic activities, and environmentally sustainable growth. The construction of the main motorway backbone, the electricity interconnection of the Cyclades Islands, the Coralia Innovation Center, the rural broadband, the rehabilitation of Carl Lake, the urban regeneration of exactly Thessaloniki seafront, the so many museums, schools, health centers, 
are only some of the examples of what cohesion policy has delivered so far. In fact, Greece has gone through a very painful decade. We are all aware of the sacrifices and efforts, and me in particular, I followed it very closely, that the Greek population has made in order to achieve, again, a sustainable recovery. When all indicators were showing that growth was returning to Greece, the COVID-19 pandemic broke out and stopped this trend, plunging the whole EU into a recession. Greece is not the only case. This puts pressure not only on Greek national health system, but also on entrepreneurship, employment, and in particular tourism, which is the backbone of the economy in many, many Greek islands. Europe is here to help, to help you to get quickly back to a speedy and sustainable recovery and address the challenges of the future. You mentioned it, and in fact, the Greek government has reacted very, very rapidly and provided immediate support to citizens, small and medium enterprises, and of course, the health pandemic, facing difficulties because of the lockdown. It made use of the exceptional flexibility provided for by the, this emergency adaptation of legislation, the Corona Response Investment Initiative, which is known by CRI, in order to finance with the, around 1.1 billion euros from cohesion policy funds, uh, all these expenditures that include 90,000 uh, small firms and enterprises. On the 21st of July, uh, this last July, 2020, the EU leaders agreed on a recovery plan, this recovery plan you have just mentioned, and also on the multi-annual financial framework for 21-27, which is the multi-annual funding uh, that, uh, that Greece has benefited from, as many other countries, paving the way out of the crisis and laying foundations for a modern and more sustainable Europe. In the 2021-27 programming period, Greece will receive around 21 billion euros under cohesion policy, this multi-annual um, framework. This represents a considerable increase, to be around 8% increase in comparison with the current period that is finishing now. Cohesion policy will continue to be a main source of EU investment and will play a <laughs> A role in supporting the recovery of Europe and of its regions. In this regard, I am glad that the Greek government has decided to continue with 13 regional programs. Greece will also benefit from the new recovery plan for Europe, uh, the biggest part of the next generation EU. This will provide very special funding on one hand, additional resources to the current cohesion policy programs through a program called react EU, but also around 26 billion via the new recovery and resilience facility. And this is dedicated to promote investments and reforms to address the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, but to assist a more robust recovery strategy based on a digital and green transformation of the economy. Again, cohesion, solidarity, and a balanced recovery is at the center of this agenda. Moreover, there will be a new instrument, as you mentioned, the Just Transition Fund and Mechanism will serve the ambitious objectives of the European Green Deal for becoming a climate neutral continent by 2050. This fund aims at its core at alleviating the social and economic impacts of the transition, particularly in those regions that depend a lot from, this, uh, from, the, from carbon or carbon related industries. It will support economic diversification and reskilling and upskilling to facilitate the workers' path into the new jobs facilitating this transition for climate neutrality. In Greece, the night is still an important source of energy, notably for power generation. I congratulate the Greek administration, and I've done it before when I went to, to Athens, 
um, for its courageous commitment to, to detach the economy and energy market from lignite by 2028. Greece will receive a considerable amount also in this context of, of around 1.7 billion from the Just Transition Fund, which will be then uh, increased with other elements that are joined in the mechanism. Support from Just Transition Fund combined with cohesion policy will assist the transformation of the economy of Western Macedonia and the megapolis area in the region of Peloponnesos and can promote renewable energy sources, in particular on Crete and Aegean islands. In this respect, in a dialogue with the Greek authorities, we are currently explore, exploring concepts like uh, green islands which would combine investments in renewable energy, energy efficiency, e-mobility, uh, water and waste management, and greening of tourism. While there is currently no alternative to airborne tourism, we should be aiming for some of these islands to become energy neutral or, why not, energy, even energy positive. We should partly offset the CO2 emissions caused by tourists flying in and out. We see this as a real and tangible contribution to the green transition, as well as an opportunity to market a brand, a new generation for tourist offers. This is extremely important for regions like the South Asian, where tourism is responsible for 97% of the regional GDP. It will be a challenge to use all these funds, and I mean it, it will be a challenge. A challenge, but of course, an incredible opportunity, as these funds could be a game changer and boost Greece to return to the pre-crisis levels of prosperity. And even more than that, it will give a unique opportunity to re-establish the basis for a sound and sustainable growth. The funds need to contribute to the Greek economy's transformation, stop brain drain, improve citizens' quality of life, and promote the adaptation of the Greek society to a decarbonized economy. In the coming months, we should follow an inclusive approach involving all partners and stakeholders, in particular regions and local entities, in the development of this policy. Together with the Greek government, with those regional, local authorities, and all other stakeholders, and also the entrepreneurs, of course, we will discuss what to do. But most importantly, also how to get there, how to get it done. Delivery is the key. For 2021-2027, not only do we have to set ourselves clear policy goals, but we also have to ensure that the mechanisms to deliver them are in place where experience shows that they are not, we have to rethink and rearrange the implementation structures. And an opportunity is there even for reshaping public administration within the recovery and resilience facility. Coordination and ownership, capacity building mechanisms, and simplified and more than delivery and implementation arrangements need to be put in place to ensure that the EU funding will support real economy fast and that citizens will be able to reap the benefits of this new package. Simplification of procedures for project implementation is equally crucial. Even the best investment program will not deliver if project promoters get discouraged by red tape and by delays in the approval of their proposals. Beneficiaries, local and regional authorities need to be capable to deliver complex and demanding projects that require high administrative and technical capabilities. Where necessary, beneficiaries have to be supported by way of a structured mechanism for project preparation and other forms of focused technical assistance. Greece, of course, disposes of a highly qualified, skilled and experienced staff with a long-standing experience in the management of EU funds. We need to take full advantage of this pool of expertise and knowledge and use it in the best possible way to ensure effective delivery. With the confluence of cohesion policy, the recovery and resilience facility, so RRF, 
the just transition fund, which is enlarged in the mechanism, and the REACT EU, European leaders have given us the chance to support Greece to overcome the COVID-19 crisis and prepare for the green and the digital transition. Never were expectations so high and was the pressure on us to deliver so strong. On the side of the European Commission, we look forward to efficient and fruitful negotiations that will allow us to be ready for implementation as from next year. So it's really, really a race, but a race with a lot of quality. We have got to do the right projects that really make a change for the citizens and for our economy. And I'm sure that together we can make it. So thank you very much. I won't be able to go working with you and listening to you. People from my cabinet will be following the discussion, but a big, big Efkaristo to all of you. And we keep the dialogue, we keep going forward because in every crisis, there is hope, there is a light. Let's go for it. Thank you very much. We would like to thank Mrs. Ferreira for uh, her uh, presentation. She raised a lot of issues um, uh, about which uh, we could uh, uh, talk uh, about uh, with our next speaker, Mr. Skilakakis. Good morning, Mr. Skilakakis from Thessaloniki. Welcome to our discussion. Based on what uh, Madam Commissioner mentioned, uh, and she talked about the green reform of our economy, she talked about the energy neutral islands and several other reforms of this kind. I'd like to ask you, uh, what, what part of the recovery fund uh, will go to the regions and what kind of actions will be um, financed by that? Can you hear me? There is a technical problem. Now it's okay, I believe. I'd like to begin by saying that the recovery fund uh, does not work uh, like NSRF, which is the main regional fund. It is a fund that uh, works on the basis of specific projects and programs, uh, regardless of the agency that will take over the implementation of each project or program. The key in the recovery fund uh, is time. This fund uh, is uh, neither flexible in order to move dynamically among various projects uh, to see which is more absorbable, nor it has time flexibility. For NSRF, we start planning, and together with M plus three, it might last for a whole decade. And several times, we have some projects that move on to the next programming period, if they are still eligible. But in the case of the recovery fund, the total amount of uh, the total amount of time that the funds are available is just five years. The recovery fund 
in the recovery fund, uh, you are not uh, paid uh, back uh, according to the invoices uh, that you present, uh, but you are paid uh, off uh, depending on the landmarks and objectives. If the landmarks and objectives are achieved, then there is a payment back. If the landmarks and objectives are not um, are not achieved and made, then there are no there is no payment back. And at the end of the period, that is in the third. Uh, uh, semester in the third trimester of 2026 if the landmarks and objectives are not achieved then the money will be uh, gone um, lost and the state should find its own resources in order to complete um, any projects or programs it has started these terms are extremely hard and harsh And uh, they are uh, final. It is uh, the uh, decision made uh, by the uh, Council of the Summit. In order to realize the, uh, how important it is, I will present you the results uh, of a survey carried out by Price uh, Waters um, uh, concerning the projects in Greece. Uh, this pro each project has an initial planning saying that it will start then and then we will have the contractant and later on we will have the completion. So in relation to its initial planning concerning um, uh, the existence uh, of a contractor, in average, uh, in recent years, we have a delay of 23 months uh, in order to find a, con a contractor. And as for the completion of the project, that is, uh, from the moment you have uh, assigned the contractor up to the delivery of the project, uh, uh, there is a delay of 28 months. Uh, So if you add up uh, the 23 months uh, uh, to the 28 months, uh, the result is 51 months, uh, that is. Uh, from the moment the RRF is approved, uh, up to the moment that the last uh, um, completion uh, will occur, it is uh, the uh, amount of delay that we usually have in our projects in recent years. You can all realize how difficult this exercise is. Uh, and this means that uh, a revolution will be necessary in the way that we all work. Uh, in order to be able to achieve the goal, which is not only to absorb these uh, funds, but to absorb these funds by mobilizing uh, at the same time um, credible funds from the private sector and do it in a way that will be uh, e uh, economic and regionally effective and do it in a way in which uh, when the audit occurs, and there will be audit here as well, we will not have a great returns of funds. This is perhaps the greatest challenge that we have to face. Um, in the past, we had another big objective, which was the organization of the Olympic Games. But uh, that uh, target then of the Olympic Games was uh, uh, much less uh, complicated uh, than uh, this uh, um, uh, RRF uh, pro uh, target. Mr. Skilakakis, I believe you were very clear about uh, how difficult the project you are having ahead of you. And perhaps that it's not realistic for us uh, to make any plans to absorb this money. 
We must change our realism. Yes, I hope so, the Mrs. Verbiciotti says. One question for you. Have you got uh, any projects uh, in your uh, plans? Uh, and how much um, money will it go to the regions? The fund doesn't work in this way. The fund works on the basis of specific uh, um, standards. Um, in other words, there is no a priori distribution of funds. We can't say that you get this amount of money, the other one gets this amount of money, and so on. This is a process that includes the reforms that should occur. Let's not forget that these projects are linked and connected to reforms. So these proposals are connected to reforms, and this means that there must be a cooperation uh, among the ministries and the regions and uh, communities in order to respond uh, to the reform character of the program. The program might even finance the cost of reforms, and it might finance simplification and digitalization projects. Obviously, the regions should organize in their services in such a way and radical way all this simplification. So we should proceed with a simplification. This is uh, vital. Besides that, uh, the green projects are important. 37% uh, of the fund, let's not forget that, uh, goes to green actions. This means uh, projects uh, that uh, uh, will limit uh, uh, the climate change in some way and help the country to adjust uh, to climate change and are important uh, for circular economy. For example, all the projects of uh, waste management belong to this category. Therefore, there is a, um, a, a lot of room uh, to uh, to, there is a lot of room uh, for um, projects uh, to occur. There are also programs uh, that Mr. Gigi Costas mentioned concerning private investment, uh, but with specific uh, objectives. Uh, that is to be linked with digital and green. And the procedure to be carried out is the following. If we want a project or program to be included in the recovery fund, this one should have all the eligibilities of the fund. Here I've got the relevant guidebook that was issued yesterday by the European Commission. At the same time, it should be absolutely realistic that it can achieve the objectives and landmarks that the project itself will set. Because if we don't have a realistic timetable, then the country will not receive the money. When the time comes to check, to check whether the landmark or the target has been achieved and there is no partial uh, implementation of landmarks and objectives, We can't say that uh, uh, we implemented the project by 43%, whereas the objective was 50%. If you can't achieve the 50%, uh, then you, you will not receive any funds. 
this entails a big and great financial risk uh, if we don't do the, uh, what should be done correctly. We, as a state, uh, should uh, um, give the money back uh, to and the payments uh, in this project uh, for the 43% of the project, uh, but uh, if we don't reach the 50% of the project, we will not receive the money uh, that uh, correspond to this appointment. This will create an additional financial and fiscal gap. This is a very difficult, responsible exercise, and I'm certain that the regions, uh, some of them have already done that, uh, will give us projects uh, and programs that will respond to this degree of difficulty that I've just described to you. You, were, you have been very clear, uh, um, Mr. Minister. I believe that uh, their governors, regional governors who are listening to you right now have realized uh, the importance to keep the uh, timelines. Um, at, at this point, I'd like to say that we work very closely with Mr. Skilakakis and the Ministers uh, of Labor, Infrastructure and Digital Policy in order to uh, set uh, these programs uh, and the proposals of each region that could be included in the recovery fund. Uh, we are at a good uh, point right now. Um, uh, we're going to complete these proposals so that the government will be able to assess and evaluate this project. If you allow me, I would like to make an observation. The assessment and evaluation will be a dynamic process uh, until uh, we finally submit our proposals because uh, the Commission will intervene as well. This process and procedure will be very deep uh, especially concerning the timetables and the specific actions that are linked to each project. That is, what specific permits and licenses should be given by whom and up to when. What will be the deadline given uh, for uh, potential objections. Uh, how can we have standardization of proposals? Uh, we should work very closely with uh, uh, regional governors uh, uh, in order to change uh, the law concerning the structure of public works. How can we support uh, uh, the units uh, that will carry out these projects, uh, provide them, them people, incentives, uh, uh, digital procedures so, and simplification processes in order to do that effectively and efficiently? Um, Imagine that we have a pipe through which 5 billion euros pass through. If we want this program to be successful, we should uh, include uh, um, in this pipe uh, 11, uh, um, 11 something the gentleman said, but uh, there wasn't a good community. Um, communication and his voice was uh, lost. I would like now to welcome Mr. Yunus Omar Jain, uh, who is member of the European Parliament and President of the Committee on Regional Development. Uh, welcome uh, to, uh, to our meeting here in Thessaloniki. How difficult it was uh, to preserve the cohesion fund at this level? Uh, how, uh, how are the forces in the European Parliament for the cohesion fund? Uh, are there any objections uh, to give this money to the regions? And how difficult will it be to manage the recovery fund uh, um, in each member state? Can you hear us? Uh, can you hear us? Can you hear me? We can uh, hear you, but we can't see you.
Can you hear me now? We were able to see you just for all this time, but uh, right now we cannot see you. Probably you should activate your camera. So now you can see me, both see me and hear me. First of all, I would like uh, to uh, greet uh, uh, the president, Mr. Gigi Costas, who is organizing this event. Uh, I would like also to greet uh, the, min uh, the minister and uh, the commissioner, Madam Ferreira. This meeting of ours is held at a very important moment. Uh, the agreement that was achieved in the Council is very important. Eh? And this is turned to the European Parliament because, as you know very well, the European Parliament uh, has uh, uh, the final word uh, to uh, to be placed in the uh, in the agreement that has been achieved. Uh, we talk and negotiate with the Council so that uh, we will promote our views, the views that we consider to be the correct ones for Europe and its regions. In simple words, I would like to remind you the of the position of the European Parliament concerning the agreement that was achieved and made and reached. Of course, uh, we all realize uh, the difficulties that might exist at uh, council level. However, however, we know that there is a difficulty in multi-annual programs. That's why in the discussion that has started right now, we are setting uh, some our own conditions and terms in order to reach a common agreement with uh, the Council. We have realized and found out that the funds are, are minimum. Therefore, the Council should take that into account. Concerning uh, the recovery fund, the view of all the commissioners agree is uh, agree and uh, that there is a problem that has to do with the democratic control of the recovery funds and uh, the problem that has to do with the decentralization of the recovery program this is an important point that should be mentioned and i'll come back to that We have also found out that uh, an effort has been made uh, towards recovery. There are several uh, targets uh, that have been included in European policies, uh, but uh, they won't uh, be achieved. Uh, um, we are w concerned about that. We want uh, the fundamental goals that have to do with cohesion to be preserved and kept. And we should keep uh, in mind uh, the objectives of the cohesion throughout the mechanism that uh, is um, in front of us right now. I had the opportunity to mention to Mr. Gigi Costas in a previous forum uh, where we both participated in. I told him then that the recovery fund uh, that uh, uh, was presented by the European Council is the same as uh, the percentage of credits uh, uh, for the cohesion. Therefore, we frequently connect uh, that there are problems linked uh, 
linked and connected to cohesion, and this might lead to a destabilization of policies, because what we don't want to happen is the following. The recovery fund to uh, be too far away from the categorization uh, uh, among the regions um, some of them uh, are developed, some are under development. Uh, our target and goal concerning regional policy is uh, uh, this fund uh, to be to mainly turned to the less uh, developed regions. Of course, uh, the member states themselves uh, who will manage this money, the member states should uh, uh, make sure that this money will be distributed, having in mind what I'm telling you. That is, in big cities, big cities will receive a part of this money, but we don't want this to be to the detriment of the less developed regions of a country some uh, that is some uh, more remote regions that frequently don't have access to this money therefore um, we should negotiate with the government Delfems, and this is a point of interest for all European regions, including the Greek ones. Uh, so we should negotiate uh, this issue to make sure that this will happen in the right way in the years to come. Next week, we are starting the negotiations concerning the general regulation that includes uh, the cohesion fund, um, the Fund of Regional Development, Interreg, the Transition Fund, and React U. Therefore, what we have to do is a very complex and complicated. And the following month or months, we should be actively involved in these negotiations. You should know that for the time being, the Council has not confirmed the whole text the whole document. It hasn't uh, expressed its uh, consent to this uh, document, so we should wait for the Council's consent. The position of the European Parliament is well known. Now, concerning the question raised to me, the European uh, uh, Parliament uh, and uh, the regions of Europe has have started uh, a an exercise right now aiming to mobilize and persuade people. This has started long time ago. This process should continue. We have started this uh, activity and um, we have uh, we have uh, some uh, some good results uh, so far. The work that has been done in the Regions uh, Committee and the European Parliament uh, uh, by all regions, uh, uh, by all unions of the regions, uh, have uh, given uh, us the possibility to have uh, a better view. This is the point where we are right now concerning the European Council. There are some demands uh, that uh, have been raised and have to do with uh, the um, recovery fund. So we fully agree with what uh, Madam Commissioner said uh, when she uh, gave a talk uh, to the uh, European Parliament. She mentioned that the greatest amount of these funds will be given to green projects because our policy should be cohesive. There must be cohesion among all our policies. 
this fund uh, is part of the projects uh, and is part of the broader policy concerning the green uh, um, issues. Uh, concerning Greece now. Greece, of course, uh, has paid a high price uh, concerning the policies that led it to this difficult economic condition. And of course, uh, due to the coronavirus, uh, Greece has suffered a lot and mainly the Greek uh, tourism has suffered a lot. Uh, now the recovery moment has, uh, has come. It's not a choice, it's an imperative need. If we don't want to collapse socially and economically wise, then we should, uh, using this tool, uh, we should invest everywhere in a massive and solid way. Otherwise, um, uh, we, uh, we are at risk. And even the rich countries might be carried away to an economic crisis and of course that impact would be um, numerous uh, and uh, huge because it would have a multiplying effect to the other countries. Therefore, we should all be involved in this uh, approach uh, of cohesion. Uh, it's the best uh, approach to achieve uh, the goals and the economic uh, targets uh, that we desire to have. So we should know whether there is uh, an, uh, an uh, degradation uh, uh, of the situation uh, in some countries that will be perceived uh, in uh, uh, richer countries. So if we want to have the recovery of Europe, uh, uh, cohesion is absolutely necessary. Cohesion should be done at central level that will allow us uh, to build up uh, Europe ju uh, just as the structural funds allowed us to do so. I apologize, but uh, we should stop at this moment. Uh, uh, you were correct uh, when you said uh, all this. Uh, Mr. Romerji cannot hear the lady, uh, but we have to stop here because the second panel should begin. So now we can move on with our uh, second panel. Uh, once again, we have the opportunity to have uh, very important guests because we will uh, receive the uh, examples presented to us uh, by the Prime Minister of the State of North Rhine and Westphalia, Mr. Armin Laschet, uh, who uh, governs the greatest region of Europe, um, and how he tackled the crisis. We also have with us Mr. Renaud Mousselle, who is the president of the Association of French Regions, the president of Region Provence-Alpes. Um, we will also have uh, Mr. Papasteriou, who is the president of the Central Union of Municipalities of Greece, and Mr. Theodorikakos, who is the Minister of uh, Interior. Uh, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Gigi Costas. I'm very happy that uh, we are uh, welcoming to this meeting uh, uh, Mr. Laschet, the Prime Minister of the State of North Rhine and Westphalia. Uh, he is a really good friend uh, who has left uh, his uh, uh, footprint in European policy. Uh, he is uh, a leader in Germany, a politician, 
that is much needed not only by his country but by the whole of Europe. I have the honor to have worked with him. I know how important uh, his work is. Uh, he is the, the leader uh, and he is leading um, one of the biggest regions in the European Union and how he intervenes in a surgical procedure uh, uh, to tackle any problem that uh, might comes up, uh, that come up uh, for example, the coronavirus uh, crisis. Uh, this is an example of the leadership uh, that uh, Europe and Germany need to have. I'm particularly happy to have him with us today because I would like to welcome him to a forum uh, that is happening uh, because we had the um, cancellation of uh, the Thessaloniki International Fair that happens every year. This year, Germany would be the honored country but unfortunately due to the due to the pandemic uh, this year's diff was cancelled uh, the commercial part of it uh, was uh, cancelled but we kept the political part uh, <coughs> In my view, I believe that uh, uh, when TIFF is held in 2021, uh, Germany should be once again the honored country because this was a golden opportunity both for Greece and Germany to have uh, Germany as honored country in this year's TIFF. Before giving the floor to the Prime Minister, I would like to say that uh, two days after the presentation of the President of uh, the European Commission, Madame von der Leyen, in this, about the State of the Union, which was a very uh, ambitious uh, presentation that raised uh, some uh, spearhead issues for Europe and for the German presidency, for example, the environment, the green agreement, uh, um, transition to digital issue, migration, uh, health, um, uh, and we should underline that um, uh, the uh, proposal by the European Committee of the Regions to have more funds was adopted by the European Commission. The President of the Commission, Madame von der Leyen, showed where Europe should uh, return to in the following years uh, and should be directed. Uh, in my view, what is important nowadays to tackle and see is how, how Europe will be able to reach uh, at that point in an effective and substantial way. So from where we should answer the question how? The answer to this vital question uh, it was shown in practice uh, during the recent crisis. Um, According to that, uh, undoubtedly, we cannot talk about uh, uh, the future of Europe if uh, member states uh, uh, go back uh, to seclude themselves in their borders. Um, uh, we can we must have uh, cooperation and collective effort uh, in order to have the europe that uh, we want uh, to have so i would like to repeat once again something that i've mentioned in the past uh, for me Euro, the europe of two dimensions that is a europe that is focused on brussels and the national capitals of its member states has shown its uh, limits and borders in my view, Europe must change in a substantial way, that is to move uh, to the Europe of three dimensions, uh, three dimensions, European Union, member states uh, and regions uh, with municipalities. So these three parts uh, will be working together in order to improve uh, the daily life and quality of life of its citizens. And I've mentioned that in Greece and it's true for Europe as well. It's time to move on from a regional transition, uh, from regional um, self-administration to regional governance. Some countries like uh, Germany have already achieved that. That's the only way that we can recover from uh, the pandemic and its impact. If policies are designed um, 
plant and implement it uh, from bottom upwards uh, based on the needs and priorities of each region. Germany has proven all these years that it has a very effective uh, decentralization model. The regions can be the institutional uh, um, uh, the institutional uh, advocates uh, of uh, the future Europe. With these words, I would like to welcome once again uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Armin Laschet. I really look forward uh, to his uh, uh, views. Uh, uh, concerning uh, the future of Europe uh, in relation to municipalities and re regions. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Laschet, based on what um, Mr. Zizikosa said, I would like to ask you the following. What can we learn from your uh, state uh, concerning the cooperation between the region and the central um, administration? What are the lessons that, that you took during the COVID uh, pandemic and you could share with us? Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this important forum. Right now, I am in Berlin because uh, here today we had uh, the uh, meeting of the Council with the representatives of the 16 states. Uh, we have changed the Constitution so that we will be able to financially support uh, local uh, self-administration. So I'm not talking to you from uh, uh, North Rhine-Westphalia, but from Berlin. I'd like to tell you that uh, what we are experiencing today and what we are talking about right now shows that we haven't uh, overcome the COVID uh, pandemic. We still need answers. A few weeks ago, I visited uh, the Greek Prime Minister, Mr. Mitsotakis, and I went to the island of Lesbos. I must tell you that uh, 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 the Greeks um, feel uh, the pandemic crisis uh, even uh, worse than we do here in Germany uh, because of the other problems that Greece is facing right now. Uh, what I mean by that uh, is uh, the Turkish attitude towards Greece. Uh, and Greece uh, is uh, safeguarding and uh, the external European borders. That's why Greece should be supported to that. Uh, and and it, it is also the refugee crisis. Uh, the European uh, assistance is necessary uh, to this refugee crisis. During the pandemic, we talked a lot about how we could tackle this global challenge and fight uh, against it and combat it. And as you know, in the 16 federal states in Germer Germany, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and experience. Um, plus the municipalities that are powering themselves. Cooperation at this level has shown how effective it is. The way we handled this pandemic in the 16 states is very different. We have areas in the former Eastern Germany where we have a very low number of cases, but we have cases, but we have have other areas near the River Rhine where we had high number of cases. Therefore, we have seen that we must focus on how we can take drastic measures, especially in urban centers. 
but in areas where there is not so much spread of the virus uh, to cl uh, close down everything. In March, uh, we had a lockdown in Germany. We closed the schools and kindergartens, uh, and we had serious financial uh, consequences uh, when um, the productive units, the factories, and the shops closed. Now that uh, cases are uh, coronavirus cases are increasing. We don't want to have a general lockdown, but to have to impose uh, local uh, uh, measures, um, local lockdown measures. And I believe that we are achieving that. Um, Besides the financial consequences, I believe that we must revise health policy. We had a policy and a law about short-term um, short term employment post. And I'm happy to see that the French Prime Minister, Mr. Macron, and Madame Merkel will issue and buy European bonds in order to have additional support. That was an important unprecedented step because it's clear that uh, no one is responsible for this pandemic. Uh, uh, the pandemic uh, has uh, um, attacked and has uh, uh, and has caused uh, more problems uh, to the southern European states, uh, that is Italy and Spain. And they suffered, uh, uh, Italy and Spain suffered greatly from the pandemic and uh, the other countries uh, took their lessons from that. And um, uh, when we saw the images uh, from Bergamo hospitals, uh, this was a lesson for us and we had the time to react appropriately. Uh, 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 properly. Um, the Italians didn't have the time to react in that way, but now now it's high time uh, to uh, react so because it was first attacked uh, by the virus. The 750 billion uh, will be given to the member states in order to, uh, to have economic um, sustainability, prosperity, and uh, uh, sustaining um, employment posts. Uh, it would be good to, to link to that the economic questions uh, plus the economic ch the, the challenge of digitalization if we want to be competitive to China and, European, and uh, the United States. Uh, as European citizens. As Mr. Didi Costa said, we have three dimensions. We have the European dimension, which should be strong. And we need more Europe at this level. We need a European uh, research uh, at the medical and pharmaceutical level. And simple things, uh, for example, like uh, the uh, protective masks, uh, that uh, could it be found in the European market because we depended on the Chinese market. And uh, we gave uh, all our production to China in order to gain some extra cents. This means that we should become independent and we should take uh, the production uh, of uh, health, um, of health uh, items in our hands. We must have uh, a common health uh, research concerning the vaccine. Besides the money and who is in charge of the survey and research, it should be given to all European citizens. That's the European dimension. Secondly, we have the member states. The member states are called upon to tackle the crisis in their countries. And uh, the third level is the dimension of uh, the regions and municipalities. This is the level that is uh, nearer, closer to citizens and knows better the issues that should be solved and settled. 
And this is true not only for the pandemic, but in other sectors as well. When we talk about digitalization, we also need a digital internal market. We need a common strategy, strategy both for the taxation of digital overvalue, uh, hypervalue, because uh, we have uh, a great uh, a lot of uh, SMEs, uh, but during the pandemic, um, uh, during the pandemic, several citizens uh, um, uh, ordered electronically the products they needed uh, from America because they don't have uh, the taxation to pay, uh, although there were uh, electronic shops in Europe, but they had to pay the taxation. So we must... Um, proceed to um, this um, about this taxation. I know that today in Greece you have to move away from lignite. We had a similar problem in the past and we also stopped using lignite. There are a lot of things that we could talk about that. Um, I'm, we among regions because uh, the issues that uh, demand the energy solutions are of strategic importance. And one last thing that I would like to mention is the following. The border between uh, the Netherlands and North Rhine and Westphalia was open throughout uh, and during the pandemic. Uh, other uh, German states uh, closed their borders uh, to Austria and, Ger and France, uh, which uh, had detrimental effect both uh, to the citizens and to the economy. We believed uh, that we should tackle the pandemic uh, in a cross-border manner. We had a cross-border team that uh, it meant that we exchanged our data and information about the pandemic with our Dutch colleagues and we tackled this challenge without stopping the borders because the virus doesn't stop at the borders. It goes beyond them. We cannot tackle um, virus only within our country. The lessons that we take from the pandemic is that at border points there must be a cross-border uh, cooperation so that uh, our external borders will never be closed again uh, and separate our citizens and uh, damage our economy as a result. I'd like also to stress and point out uh, the work uh, being done uh, by Mr. Gizikostas, who is the president of the European Committee of the Regions. He showed us uh, that he is uh, a young politician, but he has long experience. He can tackle all issues. We need more politicians of this kind that that have responsibility, energy, uh, promptness and effectiveness uh, and can support the European pro uh, project um, and task. Uh, if we um, uh, have in mind Madame von der Leyen's uh, presentation about the European Union, we will see that we have uh, big uh, European goals and we shouldn't leave uh, uh, Europe in the hands of popularists. Uh, to this direction we will all struggle for. We here in Northern Rhine and Westphalia. I would like to thank uh, um, uh, Mr. Armin Laschet uh, for uh, his presence in, in Hell Expo Forum. I know that he has a very heavy schedule. I know the struggle that he has been given. I truly appreciate uh, that you found uh, this time to share with us your very interesting views. Uh, I'd like to thank you and I'd like to wish you every success uh, because a personality like yours uh, is uh, the personality that uh, Germany needs in the following day, a, a personality that uh, Europe needs in the following day. Thank you very much for being with us.
Now we can move on to our next speaker. Uh, he is Mr. Dimitris uh, Papasteriou. Uh, he is the mayor of Trickle and president of the Central Union of Greek Municipalities. Good morning, Mr. Papasteriou. Uh, we heard uh, what Mr. Lasset said, the lessons that we learned uh, from and we took from the pandemic. Uh, what were your lessons? Uh, do you believe that um, regions should have more responsibilities uh, and competencies. Is that one of your conclusions? Good morning from Trikala. Good morning to everyone. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. I believe that uh, this year was a, a bad year, but a very um, uh, educative year because we believe that many things are uh, given, but that's not the way are. It's a golden opportunity to review a lot of these. Um, it's similar to the hurricane that is uh, hitting our country these days. Um, we should uh, 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 try to restructure our infrastructure and to see how we should keep our society united, uh, cohesive, and provide equal opportunities to everyone. Concerning the first and the second degree of self-administration, regional self-administration, I believe that it's a golden opportunity for us uh, to use every penny uh, from the various programs uh, that uh, uh, will be given to Greece, uh, that is uh, the NSRF program, the Antoni Stretches program, and the recovery fund, of course, uh, that uh, the minister mentioned earlier. So we should try to see all these programs together. We shouldn't tackle them individually so that we won't have overlapping. Um, the second point is ho the holistic approach. Uh, we shouldn't only see uh, one intervention on its own. For example, the construction of a uh, pavement. Uh, we should see how this intervention will be bioclimatic, uh, how it will be able to attract more tourism. Um, the third point uh, should be how we are able to preserve uh, social cohesion. I insist on that. Since March, uh, the municipalities and regions and the Ministry of Interior, we have experienced an unprecedented um, uh, situation and opportunity because uh, it is our duty to react and keep our society united. There were tens of thousands of families uh, that were supported and helped uh, uh, in the, by the municipalities and regions uh, um, door to door. But we should also try to see how we can uh, reduce the unemployment rate and what are the skills that our uh, uh, citizens should have. Uh, uh, we should try to see what is the direction of the market economy um, in order to train our unemployed people. Because not the whole country is the same, not the whole Europe is the same. We have regions that have more agricultural production. There are other tourism um, other regions focusing on tourism. So social cohesion that uh, will focus on, uh, on employment skills and the creation of infrastructure uh, for the creation of manufacturer unions. Because uh, Greece is having a new infrastructure, it, have, uh, it has new ports, uh, new uh, road accesses, uh, and new energy uh, map. So we would like to participate in the discussions and negotiations about the recovery fund. We want to be closer to the ministry and the government in order to implement what is necessary for our uh, communities. 
during the pandemic, we realized how important it is uh, to have uh, the appropriate and necessary infrastructure. If we didn't have the broadband uh, 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 network, uh, the whole thing would have collapsed. Uh, uh, so we need this uh, fast uh, broadband uh, uh, wireless or wired infrastructure. That's very important uh, that we have all realized and this would be gone through recovery fund. Uh, another point is energy, a huge part, a huge issue that has to do uh, with uh, people. Um, we should move to electrification and the production of clean energy. We must have in mind the energy balance uh, that the, uh, should be achieved in our daily actions. Uh, and the previous speaker talked about lignite and how much we would be interested uh, in uh, uh, at looking in our lives uh, in a different way. Another point is uh, the waste. Uh, Greece is lagging behind. The government planning is uh, very ambitious to that. It has started talking about the thermal waste processing. Uh, and uh, to stop uh, using landfills. Smart cities is another issue. And I'm not talking about cities that want uh, to show off, but cities which could be safe using their infrastructure. I mentioned uh, the uh, Janus hurricane that is hitting uh, our country these days. We could uh, have the necessary sensors uh, that uh, would uh, um, inform uh, um, people, uh, the citizens, uh, about uh, the forthcoming uh, risk, uh, that is to be able to uh, notify people uh, about some uh, uh, risks coming so that citizens will be able to protect themselves. And besides all this, uh, I would like to say that uh, the pandemic that we are experiencing is much bigger than uh, the human mind uh, could uh, think of. Uh, we cannot uh, um, perceive all this. Uh, people have started going away from uh, self-government. Uh, um, they have become gullible. Uh, we must convince people uh, that we do our best and in order to convince them what is needed is more transparency, more democracy, so that we will bring uh, uh, our fellow citizens closer to us and all together to move on a step forward. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your um, presentation. I think now it's high time to talk uh, 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 with Mr. Livanis, who is the Deputy Minister of uh, Interior, uh, who might uh, be able to answer the questions raised by Mr. Papastergiu. Mr. Papastergiu talked about infrastructure, energy, smart cities and waste management. Uh, um, I'd like to welcome you to our discussion and thank you for being with us. But my question is the following. What are the priorities of, you, of the uh, government in the new Bill of Law? Will you give more uh, um, competencies to regions? I'm very happy to be with you, um, even in this uh, virtual manner. I'd like to make two remarks. The first one is the following. Uh, the last 10 months uh, was an unprecedented condition that showed a lot of things about uh, the resilience uh, uh, of the political system and every aspect of public life. The, manage the successful management of the first uh, phase of the coronavirus uh, has raised the bar high and we are um, uh, determined to succeed in the second COVID uh, uh, wave. And there is no question raised uh, um, that is uh, economy versus health. Uh, uh, 
it's uh, self, the answer is self-evident. Uh, the health of the citizens goes first because if we don't have that, we cannot have economic growth. Uh, We work uh, with Mr. Gizikostas and Mr. Papastergiou and we want to change the model of the country. There is a limitation that is uh, Greece, in, uh, in contrary to Germany, is not a federal state, but this uh, doesn't limit us uh, to have a very generous redistribution of competencies from central government uh, to uh, regional and local self-administration. But in order to do that, we must be very clear Uh, and see who does what and why. And we do this for several issues. Uh, the citizen, uh, citizens and business people should know uh, where to go. The first rule uh, will be proximity. Whatever is of regional interest uh, will be in charge of regions. Whatever is uh, uh, in charge, uh, whatever has to do with municipalities will go to municipalities and whatever is central will go to the central government. So the whole mad model that the government perceives the state will change. The first steps ha have uh, been made. The pandemic uh, show gave us uh, uh, some answers uh, to the uh, potential that exists. For the last 10 years, uh, the regional operation programs uh, um, were managed by the regional uh, governments. We all agree, and Mr. Tsikostas as well, that we still haven't reached the, the degree that we wanted to have in order to reach the absorption rate we would like to have. But we can still try to find real solutions to it. One of these is bureaucracy itself. We should break this red tape, we should accelerate processes, It might uh, seem oxymoron at first, but this is uh, to the benefit of transparency because corruption uh, is found in the complexity of procedures. This means that we should move on directly uh, to the acceleration of simplifying bureaucracy. In uh, recent months, uh, we had some digital changes that paved the way. Uh, something simple, um, in order to have uh, an official declaration, uh, we had to go to the uh, citizen service centers. But now this can be done electronically, and this means that one million and a half people don't have to go to these uh, uh, citizen service centers. Um, uh, Therefore, we move on to a new model of self-governance, uh, regional self-governance, uh, and this will allow uh, the maturation of the central government and regional uh, governments. The central government should realize what is its role. Uh, When we talk about local self-government, we mean uh, an organization that will have the necessary tools uh, to exercise uh, municipal policies or regional policies. I'd like to reassure you that no one in Athens uh, could be fully aware of the problems uh, that uh, Central Macedonia uh, has. Uh, and could, can't know all these problems as well as um, the region of Central Macedonia itself knows. Um, we must move on directly to see the policies, the sectors and the policies that must be transferred to uh, local self-governments. Uh, Some efforts uh, were made in the past, but they were stopped, uh, um, they were postponed for a year or two, and then they never continued. That's a case of uh, the health uh, sector. Mr. Zizikostas can confirm that. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Patuli said the governor of Attica would like uh, to um, make an intervention. And then you will continue and resume. Good morning, Mr. Patulis. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be with you today to this very important event. It's very clear that uh, this is an unprecedented experience for the whole planet. Uh, but we must uh, manage this uh, and get out of it wiser. The crisis uh, is a challenge, a challenge of our own generation and win this uh, war. We must tackle all the risks and contribute to the fastest possible economic recovery. For Europe, this crisis is a unique opportunity, no matter how oxymoron this might uh, sound. It's an opportunity to show its uh, uh, solidarity and its cohesion. Uh, our continent uh, moved on when uh, it united its forces, uh, when member states had a common pace. And through this crisis, we will be able to recover the confidence of the European citizens. Because the truth is uh, that in recent years, uh, the European vision faded out. Um, we had uh, a populist um, advent with Euro skepticism. The thought that Europe is going away from uh, average citizen and that uh, the decisions are made uh, by some uh, institutions with no direct contact to citizens uh, has uh, supported this view. Uh, this is uh, a conviction that was supported. We should show that Europe uh, is uh, uh, our support at hard times. It's our stable reference point for all its people so, and for our country as well. The decisions made in recent months uh, are important. The recovery fund and the um, cash flow injections uh, is the practical answer that Europe gave uh, uh, against the, the pandemic crisis. Now we're moving on to the second phase, which is the most difficult one, the accelerated implementation of these policies, because the plan is there. The policies that have been announced by the government uh, are included in this um, uh, operational program are to the right direction. What is hard uh, is the implementation. The regions should have a central role to play in this venture because besides everything else, uh, the regions are those institutional agencies which together with the municipalities have the daily contact um, with the citizens. The truth is that in recent years, a lot of steps have been made in order to reinforce the role of regions. That's a very positive evolution, even more today, because the role of regions can be decisive in at least two sectors. The first sector is supporting the most vulnerable groups of the society, safeguarding in this way social cohesion. The social consequences of the crisis haven't been fully apparent. Um, the following months uh, will be difficult. Uh, the most uh, uh, means uh, of uh, social policy are being implemented uh, through regions and municipalities. Uh, we support um, uh, the, uh, the um, poor and homeless people and people in need. Therefore, we should continue this cooperation and make it even more constructive because uh, social solidarity and cohesion is a fundamental precondition for so economic recovery. recovery. 
how can we recover uh, how can we accelerate this uh, by having serious studies uh, in order to speed up the recovery uh, uh, plan the recovery fund we should promote targeted actions in fields of high added value, for example, green development and circular economy. We should include big uh, energy projects uh, in the recovery fund. Uh, Mr. Patulis, I, would, I must stop you because we are connected to the president of the Association of French Regions. Please, uh, 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 we should stop at this point and listen to Mr. Renaud Mousselet. I have the pleasure and honor to welcome Mr. Renaud Mousselet, the president of the Association of French Regions. It's very important to have him with us, uh, to share his view with us about the way they tackle the crisis and what are the basic uh, measures that uh, uh, the the base uh, measures they took and what would you like to see in the months to come good morning mr Mousselet. we're very happy to have you with us Thank you very much for inviting me it's very important that we are able to to exchange these views because uh, we are Europeans and have a common culture. Given the fact that I come from Southern France, I would like to say to my Greek friends with whom I am together here, and to invite Mr. Tizikosas to our next meeting in Paris. The situation that we are experiencing is very complicated. You, we, the whole world, Europe, uh, are facing a hygiene crisis that has several consequences. Um, economic, social, and not only. It's a health crisis uh, that um, hit uh, us uh, in the first uh, trimester of 2020. We try to tackle the crisis in a very uh, united way because uh, we are in contact uh, with each other in all of regions in France, uh, we work together. Strasbourg was a region that, uh, that suffered much more. Uh, and physicians, uh, medical doctors uh, uh, tried uh, to uh, tackle uh, the difficulties that we had uh, concerning uh, the ICU units, uh, the masks, uh, the tests, uh, and we managed to better prepare ourselves uh, In France, we had the green the uh, regions, the orange regions, and the red regions that suffered even more. We focused on the red regions in order to help them to tackle with the situation. Something else that was very important is that during the health crisis, uh, uh, we never uh, accused the central government uh, in the effort they made. There was a, a common view, in other words. We respected uh, uh, what uh, the decisions of the central government. Of course, uh, uh, we are not blind. Uh, we uh, followed up uh, what was happening, but we reacted. We reacted a lot in issues that have to do with the masks and the tests. Uh, and during this period, we showed a flexibility and an ability
we have proven that we are able to react. We did things that we haven't done before. And in this way, I think we tackled it very well because we gave subsidies and grants to all regions of the country and even to very small traders. We try to financially support them in order to prevent social consequences. All this is behind us, of course. Time was needed, but we managed to do a lot. There is a strategy, of course. There was Brexit, there was a refugee crisis. There are several open fronts in the European Union. However, the Europe managed to show that if it is united, it can settle all these problems. And it has the possibility to reach agreements with all the governments and the prime ministers of each country. Agreements that have to do with the various sectors that will be reinforced by the subsidies and grants and funds that will be given to tourism, energy, and not only. We wanted to convince everybody that we can do that united. The population of the countries are suffering. So we must explain to them that when they start listening about the, all these millions of euros, Euros, so they are afraid that this money might never reach the level. So they should be certain that this is not just hot air when we talk to them about the money that will be given, because very frequently they cannot fully understand the economic strategy about the survival of our economy, because. Uh, they try to give a, a battle for their uh, economy, for their future, and they feel remote from all this. This is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'd like to tell you that I love Greece. I, uh, I am... Um, constantly informed about what is happening in the Mediterranean. And we will always help Greece against their rather annoying neighbors. I'd like to thank the whole of France for helping us and supporting us at periods that are very difficult for our country. Thank you very much for your intervention. We'll, be, we'll talk again shortly, and I hope I'll have the opportunity to see you uh, in person. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Livanis. Could you please conclude in just two minutes and perhaps mention what Mr. Musele mentioned? 
what Mr. Mesule said is very interesting indeed. It's very important to exchange uh, points of views. Uh, it's important because the, the French model of organization is much closer uh, to Greek reality. Because it's not a federal state as in Germany. I talked to you how we're going to have the redistribution of competencies. But in order to do that, we must have an organized operational plan. We must try to see how we will have this transfer of competencies from the central state to local self government so that we won't have uh, any disturbance to have the transfer of personnel and funds uh, and to find a way to assess uh, this whole venture. So this is a cycle of uh, co quality that has um, uh, uh, correctional um, uh, actions um, in order to see how we can change the image uh, to the state. Um, we want to move on directly with the regions uh, in order to assess uh, um, this, uh, th uh, this uh, change. Thank you very much. I'd like to underline that we have a very close and uh, productive cooperation with the Ministry of uh, Interior uh, and Mr. Theodorikakos uh, and Mr. Livanis, uh, the Deputy Minister on these issues, uh, because uh, we're having really good discussions and uh, uh, soon we will reach a good level concerning decentralization. Finally, I would like uh, to welcome uh, the governor from Crete, Mr. Raoutakis. Uh, you would like to uh, make an intervention. I know that uh, your task is very difficult. Um, could you just uh, have uh, an intervention in just two minutes because uh, we are out of time? Impression. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. I would like uh, to congratulate our president for having this teleconferencing together with the European Commissioner. For the last five years, uh, we have uh, uh, worked and claimed uh, uh, social cohesion. Today, due to the crisis, the structural funds and the recovery funds should be designed in such a way um, so that the weakness of the past will be solved. The previous speakers talked about the problems that are similar to each of us. What I'd like to point out is that we can't have something happening in the region without the region itself. We must have more trust and confidence. We're having good cooperation with the ministries, but it should become better. Um, we have submitted our proposals about regional governance. Uh, Europe uh, has proven that it wants to move forward uh, with uh, the amount of money it gave. Uh, we must uh, take these uh, funds uh, uh, and uh, do the projects that haven't occurred the previous years. Um, trust, trust, trust. That's all trust to the regions. That's all needed. At this point, uh, we have completed this two-hour discussion. I hope you found it interesting. Um, 
because you listened uh, to uh, the leading personalities in this field uh, from Greece, uh, France, and Germany. We had the European Commissioner. I believe that uh, this was a very um, uh, detailed analysis of where we are heading. Uh, I can conclude by saying that uh, your work is very difficult. You have tight deadlines ahead of you so that this crisis will become an opportunity for Greece. In this event, we saw the three levels of governance. We listened to the European Union, we listened to the ministers, representing the national uh, level, and we listen to people from Greece and Europe uh, who are uh, regional governors and give uh, important battles and prove that the regions and municipalities, if they work together, both in, in Greece and worldwide, uh, can claim and achieve even more um, even more active role of the way that uh, European regions play. And we'll try to find a way to see how Europe can be closer to citizens. I'd like to thank all our friends who attended this event, uh, both physically and virtually. And I'd like to thank you personally for accepting our invitation to come here and moderate this panel. Thank you very much and may you have every success in your following steps.